for those of you who don't know who we are, um, we're Blairmore Farm and we are a five, well, the best way that we can describe ourselves is a five star holiday let's resort and we're just in between Creef and Perth. Um, we have a full working farm, but we're only 60 acres. Um, so we rely pretty much on our six cottages, which sleep in total 32 people in ensuite bedrooms. They range in size from a one bedroom cottage that sleeps two up to a five bed fully disabled access house with a glass lift that goes up the middle. We're a family owned business and in total we employ 13 people. Um, that's between both the farm um, and uh, with my husband and I running the farm and for the cottages. We have a licensed bar but it's only licensed for guests. It's a restriction um, by Perth and Kinross Council that we can only have guests using our licensed bar. We have a full catering operation for the cottages, which uses all of our own produce. So we produce our own beef, lamb and pork. Um, and all of that is used within the catering operation for the cottages and also for sales to, um, to all of our guests. In terms of the division between tourism and farming, 92% of our revenue comes from agritourism. Um, only 8% of our revenue um, actually comes from farming itself. So that 8% is the, is the sale of our meat um, and, um, and also the sale of um, some haylage and things like that as well. Um, we, have been substantially hit by this. We basically, it's my husband and I who run it and, and we don't take, um, we don't take salary. We only take dividends from the company, which we made limited. Caroline, could you go on to the next slide, please? So looking at the, I've broken this down purely into accommodation at the moment because otherwise it gets really, really complex in terms of all the different revenue streams, but overall, our loss of revenue this year for the accommodation has been just under £300,000. Um, of that, we have actually refunded £49,430 and two pence. It's been absolutely devastating for us. I decided to break this down into the, the impact of being in tier three and the impact of actually being uh, the impact of the rule of one, because Actually, you might think that because we've got three houses that sleep um, four people, um, that actually they wouldn't have been that badly affected. But the reality is, is that oh, the majority of our guests come from the central belt. So Glasgow, Edinburgh, um, and actually we get a lot from Aberdeen as well, being in the location that we're in. So the rule of one impacted us just with a loss of revenue of uh, f just over 46,000 pounds. And of that, um, the refunds amounted to a total of just under 20,000 um, pounds. We had a lovely um, chap come um, and speak to us from the courier and he did, a, he did an article on us. And at that point, our, our refunds uh, from the rule of one were just, just over 15,000. I entirely agree with both Jenny and Gordon that moving the, the postponement of bookings, um, this doesn't include, by the way, the loss of revenue that we get from the postponement of bookings, which moves them into next year. Um, we've also had some that we moved, we've actually moved, there's one booking we have moved six times. So if you think about that in terms of the actual time and effort that it takes to move these bookings, um, and also the disappointment from the guests as well. I know that the majority of them try not to um, try not to sort of blame you for the fact that there's COVID and that you have to move the bookings, but they are ultimately incredibly disappointed. We're sitting in tier three at the moment, and um, the loss of revenue from our accommodation at the moment is twenty-two thousand six hundred twenty-seven pounds and seventy-five pence. Much like Jenny, we've made the we've made the hard decision that we are the business is not sustainable whilst we are in tier three. We get uh, I think in the last eight years that we've been established, we've had three bookings in total from the Perth and Kinross area, 
and that's because um, they've actually come as a business to book and hold a conference here. Um, so we have had to close at the moment until the 11th of December. We've put all of our staff on furlough, but despite this, the loss of revenue um, and everything else, we're, we're still looking at having to potentially make two redundancies despite furlough. Um, it's been pretty devastating for my husband and I. Um, we have no income as if we're not selling bookings. The farm itself, through the sales, that 8% um, that we get from that, wipes its nose and keeps the animals fed and keeps everything going. <clears throat> Excuse me. But fundamentally, um, with the potential losses of bookings for Christmas this year, so the Christmas and New Year bookings alone, if we lose those, that is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that is, uh, that will be a loss of in the region of £16,000 again. Um, those have already been prepaid. So um, that will be us refunding uh, £16,000. We do not qualify for any financial assistance at the moment from, for the government. £2,000 a month, if we were to get that, if we were to be put into tier four, would just about pay for the electric bill. To keep the pumps going, to keep the houses warm, to make sure that we can keep the heating on so that the pipes don't burst over the winter. Um, we're having to still run a low level of heating throughout all the cottages despite, uh, despite actually being closed so that we can actually maintain the properties so they don't get damp. Um, so really, if we had one point to come away from this today, it's the, the lack of assistance within this, and the lack of consistency within the regulations and within the restrictions. The self-catering as itself um, has, it, it, it seems to me that, that at some points we're considered to be generalised hospitality and at other points we're considered to be independent private dwellings. And it's very difficult to, to understand where we are. And we get, I get six or seven phone calls a day from guests, sometimes the same guests twice a day because they'll hear something coming out in a briefing and they don't understand it. And we need to try and be able to communicate appropriately and consistently. But on top of this, the impact of COVID restrictions and this loss of revenue, it doesn't also take into account the amount of investment that we've had to make to making our cottages as COVID safe as possible. Um, leaving a day in between bookings, um, investing in fogging technology, investing in hand sanitizer, investing in all of the equipment and PPE equipment to ensure that our team are kept safe. Um, the impact goes far beyond um, the loss of revenue. Um, so that's all I have to say, really. And I think your figure as well, just showing that the farming side of your business, 8% revenue, um, shows how important a role agritourism plays, not just in your business, but in the rural economy. Um, significant number of employees and um, number of visitors come into to Perthshire as a result of your business and the wider rural economy. So, um, so thanks, thanks very much for, for sharing that.